Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So I'm back for another Roscoe's recap and this viewing party was for All Stars 8 episode 3. And the guests this week were Crystal Versace from Drag Race UK season 3, Blue Hydrangea from Drag Race UK season 1 and UK vs The World season 1, Cheryl Hole also from Drag Race UK season 1 and UK vs The World season 1, as well as Tace from Drag Race UK season 2. And as you may remember, I didn't do a full Roscoe's recap for episodes 1 and 2 of All Stars 8 because the viewing party took place at DragCon LA and Roscoe's hadn't uploaded the full viewing party so I just used a few clips that I found online. However, the full viewing party has now been uploaded so I'm going to give a short recap for that viewing party as well as the viewing party for this week because there was some additional information that I thought would be interesting. So today we're going to be talking about Nasha Lopez clarifying what she had said at a previous Roscoe's viewing party, what the Queen's thought of Heidi and Closet threatening to leave the competition, and why Monica Beverly Hills knew that she was going to be eliminated in episode one. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. Please note that because we're going to be talking about the outcome of certain episodes of Drag Race, there is a spoiler alert in place for this video. So to start off, as I said earlier, I did do a mini Roscoe's recap for episodes 1 and 2 of All Stars 8, which I'll link to in the description. However, now that the full viewing party has been uploaded for episodes 1 and 2, I just wanted to give some extra information from that viewing party. So to start off, Nasha revealed that she was actually the last one cast for All Stars 8 and she got the call two weeks before filming started. And so Nasha said she already knew who the rest of the cast were because she had heard rumours that lots of people had already been cast, such as Jessica Wilde, who said that she got called about a month before filming started. So this means that Jessica and everyone else had about two weeks more to prepare than Nasha did. Darian Lake was one of the guests at the viewing party and Nasha said that Darian should not have been in the bottom in episode 1 because she never complained and learned the choreography. And then host Batty Davis agreed and said, quote, I will say her name, James did not carry that. And everyone started clapping and Nasha stood up. Nasha then said, quote, this is what effing pees me off about this show. And Nasha went on to explain that the judges critiqued Darian for supposedly messing up her choreography. But when it came to James, they also critiqued her for her choreography, but they said that it didn't matter that she messed up. And Nasha said that the judges are not being consistent and said, quote, the effing hypocrisy. If you're going to set standards, you hold every B to the same mother effing standard. And Alexis Michelle, who was also a guest, said that she thought that her group did better and thought that they were all going to be safe and she was surprised at the outcome. They then talked about the lip sync between Kahana Montrese and the lip sync assassin that week, which was Aja from season 9 and All Stars 3. And Alexa said that although she loves Aja, she did say that, quote, my sister Kahana Montrese did the assignment. They then went back to talking about the bottom two for episode one and because both Alexis and Mrs. Kasha Davis had both said that Darian should not have been in the bottom, Nasha asked who they thought should have been in the bottom instead and Mrs. Kasha Davis said James. Batty Davis then asked why she thought that and Mrs. Kasha Davis said, quote, because I was there and what you saw was not what happened. She cried, she didn't do the choreography, she wanted to go home, she was ready to quit. I'm just saying I was there. And Alexis then said, quote, hashtag what Kasha said. So it appears that both Mrs. Kasha Davis and Alexis both agreed that James Mansfield should have been in the bottom in episode one. And it sounds like James potentially had a bit of a meltdown that wasn't shown in the episode, which is why the Queens felt like James should have been in the bottom. And this is interesting because in the clips that we saw from TikTok, the person who posted the videos put the caption saying that Nasha was saying that James should have been in the bottom instead of Nasha, which would imply as though Nasha was talking about episode two. However, that was actually not the case, and Nasha was actually talking about episode one, which is when Nasha was safe. And I thought this was an interesting development and it shows that the original TikTok video was taken somewhat out of context and it also seems like several of the other All Stars 8 queens also agreed with Nasha that James should have been in the bottom in episode 1. 
But anyway, that was it for the viewing party for episodes one and two. And now we'll move on to the viewing party for episode three, which, as I said earlier, featured Crystal Versace, Blue Hydrangea, Cheryl Hole and Tace. First of all, at the start of the viewing party, Naisha said that she was, quote, conflicted about what to share. And Naisha said that she was being attacked for being bitter or that she was attacking James. But Naisha clarified that she was indeed talking about episode one and not episode two. And Naisha made the point that a lot of the other queens also said that James should have been in the bottom in episode one. But Naisha was the only one who was getting attacked for it. And Naisha then said that she is sharing her honest opinion and her experience and what we see on the show isn't always the full story. So when she says things, she's not attacking other queens. She's just giving her honest opinion about a highly produced TV show. And this is a good point to remember that it's never okay to attack the queens or send hate to them, especially when, as we know, the audience doesn't always see the full story because the show is highly edited, so please be mindful of this when writing in the comments or posting online. Anyway, they then moved on and they started watching episode 3 of All Stars 8, and the guests were asked whether they would ever go back for an All Stars. And Crystal Versace, who won season three of Drag Race UK, said that she would go back eventually. And Crystal then said, quote, I think it would be cute because if we're going to say all tea, I don't think I had much competition on my show. So I would like to go up against some real effing drag. And a lot of people in the audience gasped and some people started clapping when Crystal said that. Crystal then pointed at Tace and said, quote, If I was on your season, it would make sense. But on my season, it was just me and there was a lot of like, no, no, it's not shade. Well, it probably is, but like, I'm just being honest. And then everyone started laughing and clapping. They then moved on and started talking about drag queens hooking up with other drag queens and host Caramel said that Tace had first-hand experience of this and asked her to explain it. Just to explain, Tace competed on season two of Drag Race UK and on the season, one of the big storylines was that Tace had apparently hooked up with her fellow season two sister, Ahura. And it became a bit of a joke throughout the season, but they never really said what actually happened between them. Anyway, when Caramel asked Tace that, everyone started clapping and Tace said, quote, whoa, 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 stop the press, let me clear this up right now. Tace then explained that she and Ahura made out once in a club when they first met, and Tace then said that Ahura kept going on with this storyline that the two of them had slept with each other, but they didn't. Cheryl Hull then joked and said, quote, she needed a storyline, didn't she? They then asked the other people on the panel if they had ever hooked up with anyone else, and Naisha laughed and tried to avoid the question, but then she admitted that she had hooked up with another drag race queen, but she wouldn't say their name. But she did clarify that it was not anyone from her season. They then moved on to the challenge for this week, which was the supermarket ball, where the queens had to serve two looks from home and then make a look themselves using supermarket-themed materials. And Blue Hydrangea made the point that you can't always see the details of an outfit on camera, but then sometimes they'll zoom in on details if they want to use that as a reason to put someone in the bottom. And Naisha said that the judges are actually sitting quite far away from the runway, so they can't always see the outfits very well. But Naisha said something interesting about production and said that before they go on the runway, the queens have to have their photo taken on an iPad in the workroom and then the judges are given that photo to look at on an iPad during the critiques. And this is how the judges can see the queen's outfits and they use that to come up with their funny commentary during the runway. But Crystal said that the photos are always horrible and the lighting sucks. They then talked about the fame game, which is when the eliminated queens get to still showcase their runways every week, and then the audience will get to vote for which eliminated queen had the best runways. And Caramel asked Naisha if she and Monica Beverly Hills would be making an outfit for themselves for the design challenge, but Naisha said no and that they're just showcasing their two looks that they brought from home. And Naisha added that they were really strict with the queens for the design challenge and the queens were only given a certain amount of time to work on their outfits. And when the time was up, all the queens had to stop working on their outfits and they weren't allowed any extra time unless everyone got extra time. Blue Hydrangea said that on UK season one, they had a day off where they were allowed to work on their outfits, so they had two and a half days in total. 
But then on UK versus the world, they only had a day to do it. Plus they had to film all of their workroom conversations as well. And Tace and Crystal said that it was the same for their seasons and they only got a day to work on the outfits. They then moved on and talked about the bottom two for this week, which was Mrs. Kasha Davis and Darian Lake. And Cheryl said that she felt like Mrs. Kasha Davis had kind of given up because she gave that speech on the runway. Batty Davis then said that Mrs. Kasha Davis had a moment where she showed that photo of her husband in the workroom. And Batty said, quote, if we know one thing, you don't do that. Don't give them that opportunity. And Blue said that when the producers ask you to talk about things, you always think, quote, oh no, it's my time. And Blue implied as though that usually means that you're going home that week. Tace agreed and said that if you watch Drag Race a lot, you notice that the person who gets a moment at the beginning of the episode tends to be the person who goes home. Crystal then said that on her season, the exact same thing happened with Anubis, who was eliminated in episode one. And Crystal said that in the workroom, they went to Anubis and asked her to talk about her father who had passed away, and then they sent her home that episode. Nature then said that on All Stars 8, in the first episode, she and Monica Beverly Hills were sitting next to each other in the workroom, and Nature said that a producer came up to them and said, quote, I need you to talk right now, whatever you want, I just need you guys to get more camera time. And apparently Nature said to the producer, quote, there's still 11 episodes, what the F is the problem? And apparently Monica and Nature then looked at each other and said that it's not looking good, and they implied as though that they knew that Monica was likely going home that week. They then moved on and talked about the lip sync that episode, which was against Jessica Wilde and Raja O'Hara, who competed on season 11, All Stars 6 and Canada vs. The World. And Caramel said that when Raja was announced as the lip sync assassin, Kahana had said that Raja was a recently crowned queen because she had just won Canada vs. The World. But Caramel questioned how Kahana would have known that because All Stars 8 and Canada vs. The World were filmed around the same time. Batty Davis then said that all the queens know each other, so of course they knew who wins. And Nature said that the queens are actually told that kind of information by production because it's relevant. Nature then said that if she were the lip sync assassin and she was up against one of her good friends, like Raja was against Jessica Wilde, she would know that your good friend could potentially win $30,000 cash tip. And Nasha then got up and laughed and said that she would have just moved side to side and Nasha implied as though she would have done badly in the lip sync on purpose to make sure that their friend won the cash tip. They then moved on to Untucked and there was a moment in Untucked where Heidi in Closet was frustrated that she was safe and said that she felt like she should have been in the top. And Batty said that it reminded her of Lucy Laduca in season 15 where she always felt like she should be in the top. And Batty said, quote, you're an all-star, you're either going to win or you're not, but to be and to feel that way is one thing, but don't let production show it, because what we have seen is that they're going to show it and then use it against you. Heidi then said in Untucked that she was going to leave the competition because she was fed up. And they then discussed the topic of queens quitting the competition, and Batty said that Heidi should have thought about that before she voted for Nasha to leave. And Tay then said that if queens think that they're not going to be able to handle the competition, they should not go back for an all-stars because there are lots of other queens who would love to take that spot. Nature then brought up Isis Couture, who left Canada vs. the World due to her mental health. And Nature said that even though Isis was slaying the competition, she left to focus on her mental health, which is a fair reason to leave. However, Nasha said, quote, if your need to go home is because you're not winning challenges, that's just being a baby. There was then a sweet moment where Nasha FaceTimed Mrs. Kasha Davis, who got eliminated that episode, and Nasha got everyone at Roscoe's to say, quote, we love you to Kasha, and Nasha added that she had permission from Kasha to do that. They then moved on to the audience Q&A, and an audience member said that they loved Crystal Versace's C3P ho look in the acting challenge on Drag Race UK season three. And the audience member asked if the outfits for the acting challenges are provided by the show or if the queens have to bring them from home. 
Crystal said that the outfits are created there and they're provided by the show and apparently there's a big warehouse where they have lots of outfits and there is a team who work on these outfits and they have the outfits in all different sizes. But Crystal and Taste implied as though the materials and wigs are usually quite low quality and look like they come from a party store. And finally, someone asked if the queens stole anything from the Drag Race UK set. And Crystal said that she stole some wig heads because they're useful, and Blue Hydrangea joked that they didn't have any wig heads on UK vs The World because Crystal had taken them all during season 3. Nature then said that Anitra had admitted that she cut a piece of the workroom wall out and took that with her after season 15. And Nature said that she also took a piece of the wall during All Stars 8, and then other queens did the same thing, so there is now a huge piece of wall missing in the workroom. And Nature added that production of season 16 is starting next week, so it'll be interesting to see if they notice that there is a big hole in the workroom wall. So there you go, there was the Roscoe's recap for All Stars 8 Episode 3, plus a bit of extra information from the viewing party for Episodes 1 and 2 of All Stars 8. So what did you think of All Stars 8 so far? And who are you rooting for to win the season? Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to get access to my videos before they go on YouTube, as well as shoutouts in my videos, priority when submitting interview questions, and also access to my archived videos, you can join my Patreon for just a few dollars a month to unlock these incredible benefits. I'll put a link in the description. And I'd just like to say thank you so much to all of my incredible Patreon members. Your support is really amazing and it really does make such a huge difference to my channel, so thank you all so, so much. Please make sure you like, comment and share this video as it really helps support my channel. And of course, please make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date about new uploads. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye!